practice like it's the last one to go. <laughs> 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 I, did, I did check with Dr. Ben Hoss and she said I didn't have to practice the slides, but she didn't have any, but then that's okay. But um, go, go with me in your mind and come up with the recipe that you want to see. I guess as, as an engineer, we're used to being the downer in groups like this because our natural science friends uh, are so good at, at bringing you into the, the world of nature and, and who we interact with beyond our own species and, and the resources that we share. Uh, I guess that's where I'll take off for us in terms of what we do in engineering is that we're dealing with a shared resource when you talk about water. And I'm sitting here looking at Catherine and she first let me talk to her about the, the climate issues associated with things and it scared me because there's another future for us to plan with, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> How many years of therapy? Um, <laughs> it depends on which specialist you're talking about. <laughs> but anyway, the, as my son tells me, I have to embrace the uncertainty. That's what we do. And actually, all of us who work in water resources management are embracing uncertainty as long as we uh, got away from the safe uh, nature of dealing with structural analysis and design. You know, where they have all the, all the uh, factors of safety. Here, uh, we, we just we don't say educated guess, but we try real hard. So, uh, I guess the, the way I would put uh, this few minutes uh, in, in focus for us in terms of how we consider water issues is, is supply and demand, as we mentioned. Uh, when it comes down to how much water we need and where we need and when we need it, that's, those are decisions that we make as people. So we have to set our goals for what we want to do with the water. Are we going to consume it like it? <laughs> Turn down the volume on the computer. On the big keyboard. Alright. Hopefully I was touching the Always is competition or healthy friendly competition for how water is used. The thing we don't control very much is the supply. How much water is out in the forest depending on where we live. Oops, that's a big thing, depending on where we live. That's part of the definition of civilization. And when you look back at ancient history, which as an engineer I know very little of, so I do repeat a lot of it, is uh, the uh, civilization started next to water and also next to safe water because the people who started civilization next to bad water aren't here anymore. <laughs> so, uh, the definition of civilization is that we can live where we want and move the water to it. But that means we have to move it, we have to pay for that. So for engineers, that's our job to understand how, how can we move the water from place to place, how do we convince the people who want it that they're willing to pay that much, and oh, by the way, nothing is going to get cheaper. So that's an important uh, part of the issue. The last thing I'll say is that different users of water have different time scales for which they plan. As uh, Dr. West was talking about, the friends in agriculture, a lot of their decisions have to be made fairly quickly in a matter of a, a year or two or three based on how their financial process works in terms of how they buy the inputs and grow the crop and see what they can sell the outputs for. And that has to turn around pretty quickly. Municipalities and industries have to plan for decades in order to spread the cost out long enough that they can be amortized where they can make a profit 
or at least break even for the city. You know, any city governments that want to pay more for anything right now? It's a big challenge that we have on our places. Anything we're going to do to make more water available means we're going to be reaching to water that is of lower quality than we have now, and so we're going to have to get more treatment. So those of us in the civil and environmental engineering can handle that process. Thank you for that. And it's our job security as we try to help help you deal with those issues. The concept of climate has introduced a new uh, representation of the future. Actually, there are multiple representations of the future. We used to just think the future will be like the past, and that's good enough. But now we've seen more of the past, and we know the past isn't like the past as much as it used to be. <laughs> so uh, we have to so we don't have stairs and steps to demonstrate the projects we've worked with before. So uh, for those of you that are getting out at this time, this is a good time to uh, have big brains and big thoughts in terms of how do we represent the future and think about multiple pathways that can serve the people we want to serve. Thanks.